like nature. It's what we're all about. Wagons ho! <laughs> Have a look at that! That's when they think it's safe to come out. Not an animal! Fine! <laughs> I guess in the end that's probably why we all go fishing. what we're looking for, but a good example, folks, of what this system here at Port Albert is all about. Part of the mammoth estuarine system that stretches from Wilson's Promontory in the west right down to the entrance of McLaughlin's Beach towards Lake's entrance end of the 90 Mile Beach. A beautiful example of an estuarine system doing well. Arapus trutter is the Australian salmon, and this is the one we catch on the surf beaches. As he gets a little older, perhaps another year or so, see you later mate, he will head to the ocean with his thousands of mates. He'll lose those spots, get a big dark back and he'll become the sport fish of the 90 mile beach and other beaches towards Melbourne. But Port Albert is just a fantastic example of man and nature working together. The locals are out today chasing the old Chinese fish, the King George Whiting. I'm aboard Sharon E2 the next edition of Mark Radden's Charters out of Port Albert. Welcome aboard, folks. We're gonna do a bit of fishing together. The signs are there, folks, that we're getting the first part of the tide change and the flood tide. Now, the easterly has gone a bee's diaphragm just slightly to the south. And things are, things are looking good here. Now, the whiting should turn up any moment. Just on cue, that is a very, very good example of why we came down here. A beautiful King George whiting, and that's what it's all about. I'll go through the gear in a moment because I've got a bit of a bite on that one. I might get someone to just lift that up there. Thank you, Bob. And Harry will just see we're getting a lovely run of fish in there. Now, ah, this is not a whiting. And people say, oh, how do you know? You've got a diver down there. I don't have a diver down there. It's years of experience to tell me that flathead swim a lot more differently and bite a lot more differently than the old Chinese fish, the King George Whiting. This here is a blue spotted flathead. Oh, no boy. There is a very, very good example of what this system is all about. A long nose flathead. Beautiful, beautiful example of one of the best eating fish in the sea. So a flathead and a King George Whiting. My goodness gracious me. A little bit of housekeeping. Change of tide, the stream going at the back of the boat, we're anchored just on the edge of a channel and the fish get a whiff of the bait that's been introduced. And this is not a bad start, folks. <laughs> I think 
we have <laughs> an Elvis Presley fish. The old leather jacket, folks. We're out here fishing for whiting, and isn't this just a piscatorial smogger's board? And that piece of weed there signifies we're in the right area. The drop-offs, the sand, the weed beds, this system is absolutely magnificent. A long shank hook, because this fish here, unlike the Leidenau frog, there's a little set of lips like that. And he comes up and feeds in a vacuum-like motion. Six spine leather jackets. There's six tiny spines down the back where Harry's showing you. The beautiful colours and the piece de resistance is that. That's what he uses to signify, I'm an Elvis Presley fish, get away from me. This is my area. But also, down on jetties, like down the back of the boat here, he goes up when the tide comes up around the pylons and he'll come up and he'll lay on his side and he'll go rub, 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 rub and take all the goodness off the pier and him and his mates will have an absolute smorgasbord. I'm not going to close this segment yet, Bob, so don't go pressing any buttons. I've got to catch you an old whiting before I sort of say, Port Albert, what a wonderful place. Notice that I'm using one with a nibble tip and one without. It's like the old trotting rig. One out, one back. The thing about it is so many people are frightened of the nibble tip. It's not part of the rod, it is a bite indicator. But all the nibble tip is, there was a bite there then, where the orange ends, that's where the rod starts. And I'll put the other one alongside it like that so Harry can show you that it's exactly the same rod with a nibble tip in the middle of it. A nibble tip in the end of it, I should say. And that fish went bang. And look at that, folks. An absolute marvellous example of why I go fishing. Now, I have an opportunity of going marlin fishing, barramundi fishing, fishing for rooster fish in South America. But I got brought up on these on the shores of Port Phillip Bay, back before many of you were ever thought of. And I can tell you now, I love fishing. I love the show. And I hope you get the feeling, folks, because that's what it's all about. Folks, I think the secret, or it's not real a secret, the fact is that when you're fishing in a, in a tide, the idea is, is to actually fish down the back of the boat because the idea is, is you can't get them out the side because you get a bow in your line. If you get fish coming up the back of the boat, you then create a pecking order. And you get whiting moving up, you get small snapper and leather jackets, and that's really the way to fish in a tide. So many people say to me, oh, you need so much weight. I've got an ounce and a half here in the old scale folks, which is only a few grams. Just a little bit of a Rexy fishing school. I hope you're enjoying the show. I'm enjoying it too, folks. You better believe it. Thank you, Michael. Oh, look at those fish. I love it. And after the break, there'll be more fishing action on Rex Hunt Fishing Adventures. Don't go away.